I think Frank Martin is the biggest threat at 135. Especially this year. Um, last year, he was coming on. Everybody was seeing the performances he was putting on and uh, showcases and things of that nature. Uh, Michelle Rivera fight. He did a very good job. Um, boxing, throwing when he need to, inside, out game. Um, I'm pretty sure everything um, lined up the way he wanted to, even though he didn't get the knockout. But, um, I mean, to be the guy conventionally who was on PEDs, that's pretty good. Should be real. Um, but his last fight against Artem, who was, uh, um, I think it might have been his uh, first fight in the uh, United States. He was a tricky fighter, um, new to a lot of people, but um, I've seen a couple of his fights before. And uh, he was, uh, I didn't think he was going to knock him out, for sure. I didn't know, I didn't think he, I knew it was going to go the way it went. As far as uh, a long distance fight, I don't know if he stopped him late or if it went 12 rounds, but I knew it was a close fight at the end. But, um, uh, I wouldn't say that takes away from anything Frank Martin does in the future as far as a Chris Stevenson fight or anything like that. I mean, they both have looked, I would say, the same as far as being challenged by a fighter who has decent amount of skills, which is going to happen. They're not going to uh, have a lopsided win against anybody. Let's be for real. Some of these guys are fighting for their life. Some of these guys are career fights for them. So, um whether it's uh, Constacio or Jermaine Ortiz or uh, Artem or Michelle Rivera, them guys going to come to fight. It's top competition now. So I feel like at 135, Frank Martin is um, bringing everything to the table as far as the competition, the speed he's moving at. Uh, I want to say he's probably like a year or he's probably around the same age as Tank or either a year younger than Tank. And from what I've seen, he hasn't been around long. So from what I've seen, he's moving at a fast pace. He's moving at pace faster than guys I've been watching the last four or five years. So I have to say he's um he's uh even though he's at he's of age up there, it's still guys who's 27, 28, 29. That's not uh fighting uh top competition right now. Um we I probably think Mungi is probably like 25, 26, 27, around there. I know he does, he's not fighting top competition that blows us away. I don't want to see uh, Gabriel Rosado. So I feel like Frank Martin is the scariest fighter right now as far as stopping things that happen at 135 that could happen in the future um, right now as far as with Shakur. Um, just 135 is so loaded. They have uh, at least... I don't know. You have at least 10 fighters that I can think of. You got Kambosa still down there. You got Loma Chico still down there. Um, you have other fighters that's around 135 that still mention they can make 135. So it's it's a deep division right now. It's going to speed things up. It, it is speeding things up. Frank Martin coming in is speeding things up because he's uh, making these sanction about his choose because he's winning fights. He's winning fights, and he's taking on challenges. So they have to move him up the rankings. And as he's moving up the rankings, that's why he's in the position he is for the Shakur Stevenson fight because he's been moving along well this last year. He hasn't really backed off the pedal on anything. The only thing he's been doing this year is showcasing his skills to the fans and people out there, but he's been more than capable of being ready. So it's going to be... A lot of things like that. He's not the only fighter that's going to cause. I feel like he's going to cause some friction. Which is, it's some. It's almost like um, the position Wilder is in right now in heavyweights. Because he's not, he doesn't have a belt, but he's ranked so high that people have to obviously avoid him. And it's not a good, it doesn't, it's not a good outcome for them, for the fans, for the next fight, for the promotions. For the promo for a fight, for your next fight. So, 135 is loaded. 
but Frank Martin is going to make sure that it gets to where it needs to be as far as this year and next year. Even with a loss, he still is going to jump into a, one of these sanctioning bodies, whether it's WBC, WBO, IVL, IVL, whatever it is. He's going to jump in one of those, even after a loss, and still be a factor. That's what people got to understand. It's going to up the competition. It might be an effect where it might be like how the 147 division was when you had Danny Garcia and Adrian Bronner and all these guys kind of carouseling and fighting each other. It, it could be that way, which we need right now because we don't have a division right now where it's clearly guys who want to go after each other. There's still a lot of tiptoeing. I don't want to see divisions like 154 and 160 where um, um, where um, guys will fight or they'll not fight or almost fight. So I don't want to um, see all that kind of stuff because uh, like how when 154 was when Canelo and everybody was there, Andre. I don't want to see a situation like that. So I like to see fighters who come in and, uh, kind of keep everybody on their toes and got guys looking around and thinking of matchups and things like that. So Frank Martin is one of those guys. He's not really thinking about uh, what body he has to jump in. He just knows that he's going to have an opportunity as a top guy very soon if he keeps winning and fighting guys, which every, that's everybody's goal should be. You know what I'm saying? Business usually comes first these days, which is a good thing. Um, everything includes business. But, uh... If you're a fighter, you will want to move like Frank right now and be a fighter. And that's just that's just true. He's moving fast. Rapid speed. Like, subscribe. Can't face the boxer.